Hey, this is Steve with Real-Time Music Solutions, and today we're going to take a brief overview of the different ways of controlling Symphonia, as well as the navigational events you'll run into during playback. First, I'm going to open and reconfigure the floating windows of Symphonia a bit. At the moment, we have open the Transport, which gives you basic controls over the music, the Timeline, which gives you a measure readout and playhead, the rhythm window, which defines what rhythms to tap if you decide to push and pull the tempo. The keyboard window, which gives you an alternate way to control the software using a MIDI keyboard. And the songs window, which gives you the complete list of songs from the show and allows you to switch between them. I'm also going to go ahead and open the function window. If you click windows at the top, show hide windows, you'll see that there are many different floating windows in Symphonia. Here is the function legend. The function legend is an alternate way to control the software. It acts much like the transport and the keyboard window, and it's best if you do not have a MIDI keyboard to use the function keys. I'm also going to go ahead and change the view filter in the timeline to navigation so that we will see navigational edits. Let's start with the most basic mode of control, Go Mode. You can enable Go Mode by clicking this button in the transport, this function key, or this button on the MIDI keyboard. I'll go ahead and use the MIDI keyboard. Go Mode puts Symphonia into autopilot. The song will play back at our pre-recorded tempo. In Go Mode, the operator just needs to pay attention and respond to a few different scenarios. Arbitrary Relocation You may find that during Symphonia playback, you want to skip ahead or back a number of measures. This is especially useful in rehearsals. You can do so easily by clicking directly into the timeline, or typing in the measure number you want to relocate to. Let's say we want to go to measure 10. I type in 10, and you see the arbitrary relocation window opens. It says go to dot 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 10. If I hit enter, I now arm the arbitrary relocation. And if I hit enter one more time, we go. For demonstration purposes, I just did that very slowly, but it can be done much quicker. 42, enter, enter. And there we are. As I said, very helpful for rehearsals. Repeats and vamps. Repeats are illustrated by these blue blocks in the timeline. A repeat is a series of measures in a score that are meant to be repeated a finite amount of times. As you can see here, measure 43 is meant to be repeated one time. Let's see it in action by hitting the go button. Like any of the navigational events we're about to discuss, you can create, edit, and delete them in edit mode. More on that in the Navigation Basics video linked in the description below. Vamps. Vamps are illustrated by these red blocks in the timeline. A vamp is a series of measures in a score that are meant to be repeated as many times as necessary to facilitate things like scene changes, mid-song dialogue, or entrances and exits. As you can see, when inside of a vamp in Symphonia, this button in the transport window flashes. This is the exit vamp button. You can also trigger it on the MIDI keyboard or the function keys. The exit vamp button tells Symphonia this is the last lap of the vamp. After this lap, we move forward. Let's go ahead and hit it now. Now, what if you're in the vamp and you immediately want to jump to the next section? Use arbitrary relocate. If you know ahead of time that you're going to be doing this, as soon as you enter that vamp, type in the measure you want to go to so that you're ready to go. You can even arm it by hitting enter. And when you're ready to jump, hit enter again. The same thing can be accomplished by creating a hotkey. More on that in our video specifically about hotkeys linked in the description below. 
Emergency vamping. Theater is a living, breathing, complex ecosystem, and like any ecosystem, sometimes things go wrong. Perhaps someone misses an entrance or exit. Perhaps a piece of scenery falls over. So what do you do with Symphonia at that point? One of the many features that puts Symphonia heads and tails above a CD track is the ability to emergency vamp when something goes wrong. Let's hit the go button. Now imagine at some point in this song, something goes wrong on stage. What do we do? We hit the emergency vamp button, either on the MIDI keyboard or with the proper function key. As you can see, we are now looping the measure where we struck the emergency vamp key. And we can exit the vamp just like normal by clicking the exit vamp button. And we move on. I'm going to go back to the beginning of the song and put us back into go mode. Now before, we hit the exit vamp button once and it gave us one measure to loop. Let's say we want to loop more than one measure. Just tap the button as many times as measures you need. I just tapped it three times in quick succession and as you can see, we are now looping three measures. And again, we can exit by hitting the exit vamp button, which tells it this is the last loop and we're out. Stops and pauses. While using the software, you may encounter a pre-programmed stop. A stop is typically indicated in the score with the caesura symbol. It stops the music cold without holding any notes. Let's see what happens when Symphonia encounters one. As you can see in the transport window, there's no action at all. Symphonia has stopped cold as per the score. When we're ready to move forward, hit the go button again. Similar to a stop event is the pause, indicated in the score by a fermata. A pause also stops the song, but it holds any notes that overlap with the pause, just like a real fermata. Now in the fermata, we can hear the contained instruments sustaining. And notice that in the transport, the go button is flashing, telling us that we are paused and to unpause, we simply hit the go button again. Atakas. In the official score for your show, you may see at the end of a song, the word segue. This means one song is supposed to play directly into the next. We take care of that in Symphonia with the Ataka event typically placed at the very end of the song. No special action is required when you run into an Ataka. The software will simply move to and begin playing the next song. Note that if, for your production, you don't want an Ataka on a particular song, you can absolutely enter edit mode and delete it. This is covered in our navigation basics video, which I'll also link in the description below. Cuts. A cut is denoted as a yellow box in the timeline. Cuts are non-destructive edits that tell Symphonia to skip over a measure or string of measures. While the user can create or delete cuts as necessary for their unique production, again, covered in the Navigation Basics video linked below, you may find right out of the box, Symphonia includes some cuts. There are a number of reasons for this, the first being scores change over the years. We may have created a Symphonia treatment for a show a decade ago and all of a sudden the licensing house reaches out to tell us the composer has cut a section or song from the show, thus we oblige. Cuts are also used over a cappella sections. Comments. A comment can be placed anywhere in the song to remind the user of something, like cueing a human instrumentalist who's playing along with Symphonia. A comment may also let the user know about a pre-created hotkey used to trigger something like a sound effect, mute or unmute an instrument, or relocate them out of a section. 
Again, for more info on creating hotkeys, check out the video in the description below. Comments will pop up and hide themselves automatically based on where they are placed. As we can see here, trigger hotkey number one for Greenfinch birds. MIDI reset. Every now and then, you might run into a situation where Symphonia holds on to a note that it shouldn't. Any number of computer quarks could lead to this problem. How do you fix it? You use the MIDI reset button. And you can do so in a number of different ways. You can hit the D sharp three key on your MIDI keyboard. You can hit the function one key plus shift on your typing keyboard. You can use the floating window here and press this big red button. And you can also use a hotkey of, if you're on Windows, uh, Control plus M. If you're on Mac, Command plus M. Let's see it in action. So we've covered Go mode as well as most of the types of events you'll encounter when playing through a song. There are two other ways to control Symphonia. Play mode and cruise mode. Play mode requires you to tap the spacebar of your QWERTY keyboard or certain pre-assigned keys of your MIDI keyboard in time denoted by the rhythmic values in the rhythm window. Let's see it in action. Tapping tempo in this way gives you complete control over the pace of a song. It especially shines in rubato or cola voce moments. Let's say you have a song that has a consistent tempo throughout most of it, but three quarters in, you want to switch to play mode to let the singer riff. You can do that as well. Let's hit the go button. And we're off to the races. Now, whenever I'd like, I can hop in and begin tapping to utilize play mode. I know a rubato section's coming up. Here we go. I'm now tapping, and it's following me. And because I know the score, I know that at measure 39, we should be locked back in place, and for that, I just tapped the go button plus the ah tempo button, which tells Symphonia to follow the underlying written tempo. I hit them at the same time, which is very easy because they are octave Ds. Cruise mode is very similar to go mode, but with one change. You can gently nudge the tempo faster or slower with these two function keys or these two keys on the MIDI keyboard. Let's see it in action. First, tap the cruise button. So we're moving along, and let's say I want to speed up just a little bit. Or slow down. And like the other modes, if we want to go back to the underlying written tempo, we can hit the ah tempo button. Feel free to experiment combining go mode, play mode, and cruise mode to control Symphonia in the way that's right for you and your production. Before we end the video, please note that when you are done with Symphonia, make sure to quit the software properly. Simply closing your laptop screen while Symphonia is open can lead to all sorts of playback quirks. We close it properly on Mac by clicking Symphonia and clicking Quit Symphonia, or on Windows, clicking the X that would be present in the upper corner of the window. Thanks for watching.